Beautiful Vasilisa Once, in a kingdom far, far away, there lived a merchant and his wife. They had one daughter who was called Beautiful Vasilisa. When the girl was eight years old, her mother became very ill. One day she called her daughter to her side. Listen, my child, she said, and remember the last words I have to say. I am going to die, my dear. I give you my blessing and this little doll. You must always keep it with you and never show it to anyone else. If ever you are in trouble, just ask the doll for advice. Then the mother embraced her daughter and died. The merchant grieved for a long time after his wife's death, but as time passed, he began to think about marrying again. He was a real gentleman, and many women admired him. There was one widow of whom he was very fond. She had two daughters of about the same age as Vasilisa, and was considered by everyone to be a good mother. Then, one day, the merchant married the widow, but he had been deceived because she was not a good mother at all to his daughter, who was the most beautiful girl in the village. The woman and her daughters were extremely jealous of Vasilisa's beauty. They treated her very badly and made her do the dirtiest housework, hoping that the hard work would make her pale and ugly. However, Vasilisa did all the work without complaining, and every day she became more and more beautiful. Her sisters, although they never lifted a finger to help, became scrawnier and uglier because of their envy. But how did this happen? It was all thanks to the doll that protected Vasilisa. It comforted her when she was unhappy, gave her good advice, and helped her with the housework. Several years passed by in this way until Vasilisa had reached the age to be able to marry. All the young men of the city asked for her hand in marriage, but no one ever thought about asking the other daughters. Their angry mother always said to the suitors, I will never consent to a marriage of the youngest daughter before the two older ones are married. Then, when she had driven away the suitors, she would turn and slap Vasilisa angrily. One day, the merchant went away on business to another kingdom. At once, the woman moved into a different house near a dense forest. In the middle of this forest was a clearing with a small hut in which lived a witch. If anyone dared to come near the hut, she would eat them, as if they were chickens. The woman constantly sent Vasilisa into the forest on different pretexts, hoping the witch would rid her of the girl. But Vasilisa always returned home safe and sound because the doll showed her the way home and warned her when the old witch was near. One evening, the woman ordered all three daughters to do some work. One was to make lace, one was to knit stockings, and Vasilisa was to spin. Each of them had a certain amount to do before going to bed. The woman then put out all the lights in the house, leaving only one candle burning for the girls. Then she went to bed. The young girls started their work by this poor light. After a while, the candle began to flicker. One of the sisters took a snuffer and pretended that she was going to trim the wick. Instead, she put the candle out on purpose. What are we going to do? The girls cried. There are no more matches to light the candle, and our work is not finished. Someone will have to go to the old witch in the forest to ask for a light. I have enough light for my needles, so I won't go, said the one who was making lace. Neither will I, said the one who was knitting. I have enough light for my needles too. You will have to go to find the light, they cried to Vasilisa. Go to the witch. Then they pushed Vasilisa out of her chair and told her to go. The girl went into her room, gave some food to her little doll, and said, 
Dolly, dear, eat this food and listen carefully to me. My sisters are sending me to the old witch, and she will eat me. Don't be afraid, replied the doll. Go where they send you, but take me with you and you will have nothing to fear. Vasilisa put the doll in her pocket and walked bravely into the dense forest. As she was walking, a sudden breeze made her whole body shiver. Then a horseman passed at full gallop in front of her. His face was completely white, and he was dressed all in white. To her surprise, it became light. Vasilisa continued walking. Just then, another horseman passed by her. This man's face was red. He was dressed in red, and he sat on a red horse. To her surprise, the sun rose. The girl walked on and on, until at last she arrived in the clearing where the old witch's little hut stood. It was circled by a fence made of human bones, and on top of the fence sat a row of skulls. On the door she saw a human bone which served as a bolt, and instead of a lock there was a human jawbone. Vasilisa stopped walking for she was paralyzed with fear. Just then a third horseman arrived. His face was black and he was dressed in black, riding on a black horse. He rode up to the door of the old witch's hut and disappeared, as suddenly as if he had sunk into the earth. Then it became night, but the darkness did not last for long because the skull's eyes on the fence started to shine. Vasilisa was still frozen with terror. She did not know what to do and stood there like a statue. All at once, there was a terrible noise in the forest. The trees shook their branches and the dry leaves rustled, and then the old witch appeared. When she reached her doorstep, she stopped, sniffed the air, and cried, Hmm, I smell a child. Who is it? Vasilisa went to the witch, curtsied, and said, It is I, madame. My sisters have sent me here to ask for a light, for we have no matches at home. Good, said the witch. I know them, and I will give you the light. First, however, you must work for me for a while. Then she turned to the door and cried, my solid bolts, lift yourself. My door, open yourself. The door opened and the witch went inside, while the wind whistled through the house. When she reached her room, the witch sat down at the table and said to Vasilisa, Serve me everything that is in the oven. I want to have my dinner here. Vasilisa lit a candle by holding it against one of the shining skulls on the fence. Then she took the food from the oven and served it to the witch. She also went to the cellar to get some ale, beer, and water. It was enough for ten men. The witch ate and drank everything. All she left was a drop of cabbage soup and a small piece of bread. Then the witch went to bed saying, while I am out tomorrow, you will clean the courtyard, sweep the rooms, make lunch and do the washing. Then you must go to the shed, where you will find a pile of wheat and get rid of the beetles. Make sure that everything is done before I come home, or I will eat you. When she had finished speaking, the witch fell asleep and began to snore. Vasilisa gave the rest of the food to her doll, and in tears she said, Dolly, dear, eat this food and listen carefully to me. The old witch has told me to do an impossible amount of work, and she will eat me if I have not finished in time. The doll replied, Don't be afraid, beautiful Vasilisa. Have your dinner, and go to sleep. The night? will bring an answer. Very early the next morning, Vasilisa got up and looked out of the window. The eyes of the skulls had stopped burning. 
Then the white horseman passed in front of her, and it was light. The old witch left the house and whistled. Her mortar, pestle, and broom appeared at once. Then the red horseman rode by, and the sun came out. The witch sat in her mortar and went off, driving it with the pestle, while she swept away her tracks with the broom. Vasilisa took the chance to walk around the house and admired the witch's wealth. She wondered what part of the work she should do first, but when she looked again, she noticed that the work was already done. And that was not all. The doll had removed the beetles from the wheat. Oh, my good helper, said Vasilisa, you have saved me. You only have to prepare dinner, and there's plenty of time for that, answered the doll as she climbed back into Vasilisa's pocket. In the evening, Vasilisa set the table and waited for the witch to return. When it started to get dark, the black horseman appeared in front of the door and immediately it became completely dark. Only the skull's eyes glittered in the night. Suddenly, the tears started to shake and the leaves began to rustle. The old witch was coming. Vasilisa went to meet her. Is everything done? asked the witch. Look for yourself, madam, replied the girl. The witch looked around her. She was very annoyed that she could not find any faults. All right, Vasilisa, she said. This time you have done the work. Then she cried. My faithful servants, devoted friends, come and grind the wheat. Out of nowhere, three pairs of hands appeared, grabbed the wheat, and took it away. Once again, the witch ate her heart's content. Before she went to sleep, she said to Vasilisa, Tomorrow you must do the same as you did today. However, you must also take the pile of poppies from the shed and wipe off the dust. Having said this, she turned over to face the wall and started to snore. As she had done the night before, Vasilisa asked her doll for advice. The doll answered, Don't worry. Go to sleep. The night will bring an answer. Tomorrow you will see that everything has been done. The next day, when the witch had left, Vasilisa and her doll once more shared the tasks. When the witch came back that night, she was again annoyed to find no faults when she examined everything. Then she cried, My faithful servants, devoted friends, press the oil out of the puppies. Out of the air, three pairs of hands arrived at her command, gathered the puppies and took them away. Then the witch ate her dinner while Vasilisa stood in front of her in silence. Why don't you say anything? asked the witch. Have you lost your tongue? If you allow me, I would like to ask you something, said Vasilisa. Ah, ask if you like. But you should know that not every question leads to something good, cackled the witch. Remember, if you know a lot, you soon become old. I would like to ask you three questions, said Vasilisa. On the way to your hut, I was passed by a horseman with a white face, wearing white clothes and riding a white horse. Who is this man? He is my daylight, replied the witch. Then I saw another horseman who had a red face, continued the girl. He was dressed in red and riding a red horse. Who is he? He is my beautiful son, answered the witch. And the black horseman I saw near the door, finished the girl. He is my dark knight, said the witch. Vasilisa remembered the three pairs of hands, but did not ask anything more. No more questions? 
asked the witch. I know enough for now, replied the girl. You said yourself that a lot of knowledge makes you grow old too soon. That is true, said the witch. I don't like revealing my secrets to the world. But now, I will ask you a question. How did you manage to finish all the work I gave you? My mother's blessing has helped me, answered Vasilisa truthfully. Ah, so that is the reason, cried the witch. Then you must leave this house at once, blessed girl. I don't like blessed girls. She grabbed Vasilisa's wrist and dragged her out of the room, then pushed her outside. She then took one of the skulls with shining eyes from the fence, put it on a stick and gave it to Vasilisa. Take this! It's the light for your sisters! She said. Take it home! At once Vasilisa started to run and the light from the skull guided her. After a long journey, she reached home again. When she went into the house, the skull said, Don't throw me away. Take me to the woman. For the first time ever, Vasilisa was welcome in the house. Since she had left, the woman and her daughters had been living in the dark. They had not been able to light a match, and any light they took from their neighbors went out as soon as they entered the room. Perhaps your light will not go out, they cried, grasping the stick from her. They carried the skull into the room, and its burning eyes stared at the three women. It didn't matter where they tried to hide. It seemed that they were followed everywhere by its haunting look. By the morning, they had all been burnt to ashes. Only Vasilisa survived. The next day, Vasilisa buried the skull, locked the house, and went to town to find work. An old lady asked for her companionship. And so she stayed there, waiting for her father to arrive. One day, she said to the old lady, I am very bored staying in the house all day with nothing to do. Please buy me some flax and I will pass the time spinning. The old lady bought her some flax and Vasilisa began to spin. She worked so well that the thread came out as smooth and fine as a hair. When she had spun a large pile of thread, Vasilisa wanted to start weaving it. The doll then gave Vasilisa a magnificent loom, suitable for weaving such fine thread. By the end of the winter, the cloth was finished and it was so fine that it could be threaded through the eye of a needle. In the spring, she bleached the linen and said to the old lady, Please, sell this piece of cloth and keep for yourself whatever money it fetches. But my child, gasped the lady, only the king is worth such a cloth. I will take it to the palace. What is it you want, dear woman? Asked the king when he saw her there. Your highness, she answered. Forgive me, but I have brought something wonderful to show to you. When the king saw the cloth, he was also amazed. What do you want it for? he asked. Your Highness, this cloth is priceless, replied the lady. I brought it as a gift. The king thanked her and showered her with rich gifts in return. I would like shirts made from this cloth, declared the king. But who can sew such finery? The king searched the land for such a needle worker, but all in vain. Then he sent for the old lady again. If you have been able to spin and weave this cloth, you should also be able to sew it, he said. This cloth was not my work, she replied. It was a young girl who made it. Well then, let her sew the shirts ordered the king. And so, 
the old lady went home and told the whole story to Vasilisa. At once she locked herself in her room and began to work night and day. Soon a dozen shirts were finished and the good lady took them to the king. It wasn't long before Vasilisa saw the king's servant standing at the door saying, His Majesty wants to see with his own eyes the girl who made his shirts. He wants to reward her in person. Vasilisa set off for the palace and presented herself to the king, who, as soon as he saw her, fell head over heels in love with her. He took beautiful Vasilisa's white hands and sat her next to him on the throne. That very day, they were engaged to be married. Soon afterwards, her father came back from his long journey. He was delighted with his daughter's fate and made his home with her. Vasilisa also welcomed the old lady, who had given her shelter, into the palace and, of course, the dear doll stayed by her side forever after.